What is going on legend? It's your boy Angus here. Thanks so much for stopping by to click on this video and a huge welcome back to the channel. Um, really hope that you're uh, having an awesome day, whatever you're up to. Um, and how's this Oompa Loompa orange glow we got going on here? This is uh, what we call uh, old mate comp tanning working its magic. But anyway, hope that you guys have enjoyed my past few videos. Obviously with me at the moment prepping for comps and photo shoots and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm quite brown at the moment and um, yeah, it's just, it's just really interesting. But um, yeah, on the last couple of videos we've been uncovering kind of like full day of eating type stuff. My video just prior was basically um, you know, stage footage and how I went with my peak week and stuff like that. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is giving you some uh, full footage and workout breakdown of what a workout looks like for me. It's going to be an upper body push based one, so predominantly chest and triceps. Um, and um, basically some, uh, some more posing uh, practice in terms of how I'm looking at the moment. So I'm currently about eight days out from my next comp, which I'm gonna be competing at, which is the INBA Perth Classic, which I'm super stoked for. Um, really, really pumped for that. And then I've got a photo shoot the day after. So we're talking May 19th, I believe, is the actual comp. May 20th is the uh, photo shoot itself. And then um, based on how I go, we'll determine on whether there's any more comps, but we shall see. Um, to be honest, I'm pretty over it in terms of prepping for comps. I'm really, really excited for maintenance intake and doing some reverse dieting and being able to incorporate more foods into my eating. And that means for you guys, what, what you can be excited for in terms of staying tuned for is uh, more recipe videos, um, more food reviews of me trying different products as I've got a whole range of different stuff. I'm really, oh, I'm really, really excited to be trying out and giving reviews on that I've got sitting underneath my desk and in my cupboard. Um, as well as me doing some cycling with calories so that, that way I can be doing um, you know big kind of hashtag cheat days and stuff like that on the weekends but anyway lots of exciting stuff to look forward to I'm also going to be getting some new tattoos and stuff so I'm excited for life um, and I hope you are too and you're loving it whatever you're up to so enough chit chat from me time to shift into some voiceover mode let's see me train and uh, in this sort of snow you're going to be seeing some man titties and some arms moving about so let's get stuck into the workout gain so first up boys and girls what we have is some decline barbell chest press um, this is something that I like to utilize here and there to be able to hit the lower um, component of the chest um, basically with this workout like and with this sort of stage of my you know prep and whatever I don't really do any strength work now because it's just too close to game day and whatever and you want to minimize you know any likelihood of injury and stuff like that so I'm pretty sure I hammered out like a bit of pyramid setting so it was like working up to working sets of eight um, and basically just focusing on really good quality time under tension and just quality of squeeze was the name of the game for this workout. And this is something you should really try and stick to when it comes to any workout because if you're YOLO bouncing the reps around and that sort of stuff, you will definitely not be making any gains. I can pinky promise you that. Then we've got incline dumbbell press, similar sort of deal. Um, I think we're hitting like reps of 10 for this one. Uh, really making sure to focus on uh, at the bottom rather than letting elbows flare out like this, keeping them consciously cued in like this while pinching shoulder blades down and into the bench and pressing up but without actually letting the dumbbells touch each other. So that way you've just got tension city on your chest throughout the entire range of motion. You just see here like you can tell with just how stimulated they are it's because well I've got some really good control going on and the mind muscle connection is there which is something that lacks for a lot of men and women when it comes to training I find and once again missing out on gains. Now chest flies is something that um, is really really awesome for width of the chest and um, just hitting the chest from a uh, a different angle and stigma than what you'll actually get uh, in comparison to general pressing. Um, I personally like to switch up between utilizing the actual machine for cable flies as opposed to just solely doing dumbbell chest flies or solely doing cable chest flies like I know a lot of people do. 
um, I like to have a good sort of mix in this sort of case with utilizing the machine chest flies. The focus is on basically trying to bring the elbows together as opposed to bringing hands together. And if you can focus on doing that while keeping your shoulder blades pinched behind you, you're going to really get the full benefit of the chest flies properly and uh, make sure that your uh, anterior or your front delts aren't being too involved, which is what happens for a lot of people when they do flies. And then obviously the YOLO bounce them around and it's just like, mate, what the fuck are you even doing? Like, do you see what I mean? So be smart when it comes to flies because this is also where people don't do them right. They can easily develop like pec tears and stuff like that, which obviously definitely isn't what you want. Um, from there, this was the bulk of the chest exercises done, but um, did a superset for this one. So it was basically a superset of um, nice high reps of chest flies. That was like 15 and then plate presses for sets of 12 which is basically where you're focusing on trying to push your hands together as strong as you can. And then pressing the plate in and out, which you'll see just gets a juicy contraction for the inner chest. And you don't need much weight at all for this one because it is very, very difficult to do. Um, especially if you're actually like, yeah, really pressing your hands together on the plate. Anyone can do it in terms of just moving the plate in and out, but this really, really, really stimulates your chest. Um, if you're doing it the way that I just demonstrated, so give that a bash next time you're at the latter stages of your chest workout. And basically what we shifted into was um, just one tricep superset, and this one we're focusing on basically hitting um, the two, or oh, well, there's three different heads to your tricep. We are trying to hit two of them um, when it came to this workout. And when I say we, I mean me and the um, training partner who I had for this video, um, Caitlin Bacon, he's a other local PT in, in Perth. He's an absolute champion. But um, yeah, we'll do an overhead um, dumbbell extensions. Um, you can obviously do this with two dumbbells if you wanted to, or you can just do it with a single one and cup it kind of like this, as you'll see me doing. This hits, um, you know, the, the tricep in a way that's different to, to like, cause obviously depending on the angle of your arms and stuff like that, it will determine um, which head is being stimulated. So obviously in this one, um, you will see that the focus is on trying to get good depth with the dumbbell while keeping elbows just in a natural position, not necessarily in close or out wide or anything like that, just a nice natural flow and position. And then basically supersetting with kickbacks because hashtag Ashy Binds, hashtag uh, do you even lift, hashtag you know, king of all tricep exercises, like yeah, I'm just taking a piece, but um, <laughs> kickbacks, nice low weight here. I'm only using five kgs, and the reason for this is so that I could basically pinpoint keeping my um, elbows, uh, you know, kind of like if you think about your torso being like this, the focus here was trying to keep the elbows basically in line with the torso as opposed to what people do I see is they just bob their arms all over the shop and there's not even any triceps being stimulated at all. So it's like that horseshoe part of the triceps is what we're really trying to stimulate here. So you see that there's a very minimal uh, bouncing of the actual tricep part of my arm. Uh, it's only towards the end once I've hit basically failure um, that it actually started to bob at all. So for this it was basically sets of 8 to 10 reps for the overhead extensions and then basically reps of anywhere between 12 to 15 for the tricep kickbacks um, to really just get a nice juicy pump. And that was basically the crux of the workout. Um, really, really awesome like just to be able to get blood flowing and to be able to get a good solid push workout in and then basically do it for the gram after that in terms of some abs work. I personally um, you know, don't usually stimulate, I'm not stimulate, I personally don't usually isolate abs too often in terms of my training. Um, but what I am starting to do now is uh, basically have abs as a bit of a finisher for one to two exercises um, to basically hit and ensure that our torso flexion is done in you know, one of the isolation sessions as well as torso rotation and then rectus work to ensure that, that way overall the whole core has been worked and that combined with the calorie deficit and stuff, more and more of the abs and the torso are being revealed. So I'd encourage you to approach that sort of angle when it comes to your own training as well. In other words, there's not really a need to be the sort of person who trains abs every single day. Like if you're doing compound lifts and that sort of thing, your core is gonna be being worked big time to stabilize your torso for the actual lifts itself. And then when it comes to actual isolation necessary and whatever, like you could do it between one to three times a week, really depending on how your main training is going. 
and then progressing there accordingly based on just, I guess, the gains that you're after and the stage of the game that you're at in relation to your aesthetics and your strength. And now we have some slightly sped up uh, footage of me doing my posing. Um, basically when it comes to like all of my posing, I was tossing up if I wanted to, um, you know, sort of trial um, potentially competing in physique, but I'm just more and more leaning towards just the, the flow and just the everything of fitness. Like I, I love how I'm looking and feeling, I love my, how my poses are looking and feeling, and obviously with more and more practice of doing the quarter turns, the main entry poses and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, like I, I literally have never felt and looked this good in terms of my physique and you'll see that show in terms of just these, uh, these turns here, getting some good practice in in terms of the crunch of um, you know, abs when you're actually doing the, um, the abdominal base poses. Um, because obviously just you know flexing them is great but to actually be able to flex them and to have them all stimulated and engaged while smiling and that sort of stuff is well where the magic happens and obviously what gets you good points when it comes to um, you know being placed well right um, I know that for the comp just gone um, you know like my posing flowed really really well you would have seen that in the footage um, everything felt really good, so it's just a means of keeping it up, I guess, is the plan for this next comp. So I've basically been doing some posing practice every day after each workout, sometimes at home in this scenario where it's under decent lighting, so that way I can compare to how my posing was looking, you know, a week ago or whatever, that sort of thing. Some of you guys have asked what I was weighing and stuff, and to be honest, I actually entirely forgot to weigh myself, so I don't even know how much I weighed for, you know, the actual day of my last comp, let alone what I am now. I've just been going off how my posing is looking, how my photos are looking, that sort of stuff, and I can clearly see that I'm getting leaner, which is great, but in the lead up eight days to the next comp, I will be doing, you know, putting in the effort to actually get some, um, yeah, some weigh-in so I can actually see where I was actually sitting and stuff um, because it's always cool to know and then that way you can compare from comp to comp. I know that one of the last times I competed which was in like I think 2013 or 2014 like it's been a while since I'd actually competed. Um, I know that I came in at like 65 or 66 so I know that definitely I'm anywhere between 4 to 8 kgs up from stage weight but I know that without a doubt I've never been this lean like it's absolutely awesome to just be seeing what my physique looks like and feels like at this sort of stage in the game and knowing that I'm healthy and happy and all my biomarkers are all on point as well in terms of you know how I'm sleeping, how blood work is, how everything is because typically what happens to people when they compete is all these things go out the window and um, yeah everything starts to turn to shit in favour of trying to achieve dope aesthetics yeah. So um, yeah, nice and simple video today. Thought it'd be cool to show you what some of my training is looking like, what some of my posing is looking like, um, and just some insight into, um, yeah, I guess how I handled coming out of the last comp and leading into this new one, given that it's kind of like a weird time frame between like, you know, uh, comp and then photo shoot the day after, and then, hey, it's another comp with photo shoots and all that sort of stuff. Like it's quite a bit of shit going on, right? So I've just been taking it one day at a time and um, been a role model for my clients. And I just love the whole prospect to be able to showcase what's possible um, when you yeah, have just mastered this shit because truth be told, like it allows you to truly control how you look, how you feel and how you function when you know how to make food work for you. Like obviously leading into the last comp, as you would have seen from my full day of eating video, I was having the same meals every day, very regularly. Now what I've chosen to do coming into this next comp is to bring back more variety and um, have more control over just the meal frequency, uh, the meal timing, the meal sizing, that sort of stuff in favor of just, yeah, getting those variety boxes more ticked. So um, if you follow me on my social uh, media, you'll see that um, you know, I'm really regular with just the stories and stuff and just showing you guys everything I'm eating and how things are going so you can feel more involved in the journey. So I highly encourage you that uh, if you're not following me on social yet, whether it be via Instagram or Facebook, um, yeah, check out the links below in the comment section. That way you can actually add me personally. I'd love for you to share in some more of my journey. Um, and uh, yeah, just see what it's like in terms of this whole game of doing things. Um, also, when it comes to you and your own journey, like if you're not someone yet who understands how to make flexible dieting work for them, or even just how you should be training for gaining strength while getting leaner and stuff like that, please make sure you check out some of the links below in the comment section because in there is where you can get um, you know, previews and even some freebies and stuff into 
to a lot of the stuff that I teach or even be able to join some of my free fat loss groups that I have as well because literally I live and breathe being able to educate and be a role model and teach you guys how to dial in and nail the game properly because well before I became a PT back in 2011 and started running my own business, like I used to be a binge eater and someone who had no concept whatsoever of all the fitness properly and I was just an overweight sad sack basically. So I love being able to help and empower men and women across Australia to dial in on this shit effectively, to be able to master what it means and looks like to be able to just control how you look, how you feel how you function while looking great naked and just loving the game so really appreciate you watching this video please if you're a returning subscriber drop it a like drop a comment let us know what you liked about it and what you want to see in more of these videos moving forward i'm really excited to be dialing in on the youtube's game and just giving you guys lots of value and love so that means that if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe as well turn that notification bell on and i'd love to see more of you engaging and just um yeah loving the game with me as we grow and kick goals together Big love, thank you so much for watching. See you next time in the YouTube world.